I felt that Bob Hope was an amazingly important entertainer in the 20th century who'd kind of dropped off the radar. Uh, not many people really talked about him much or remembered him, and there wasn't a major biography of him. So I felt it was incredibly needed. And as I started looking into it, I just realized how important Bob Hope was in so many ways. Uh, he was, first of all, he was the, the entertainer who was popular or at the top or near the top of every single one of the major fields of pop entertainment of the century. From vaudeville, Broadway, radio, television, movies, and live concerts. And nobody else could claim that. So he was really the most successful entertainer of the century. And then I thought that he, I wanted to show how important he was in terms of kind of establishing what we think of as a, as a star, as, a, as a, an entertainment star today, not just a person who's on the screen, but behind the scenes is, is, a, is a factor. Um, he was a businessman. He, was a, he owned his own material. He had his own production company, one of the first to do that. He was a brand builder. He had the Bob Hope brand. I mean, he was, a, he was all over the place. He had a golf tournament. He, had, he wrote books. He, was a, he had a newspaper column for a while. So he was a guy, he's, we, we call it brand extension today. Bob Hope was sort of the inventor of that. And then, of course, his public service. I think his, uh, his work for the troops and his charity work really set a model for all of Hollywood. And I, so I wanted to just sort of take the full measure of his achievement, which I think no one had really done before. The reason I wrote the book was to, to remind people that he may not be the stand-up comedian that everybody tries to imitate today, but if it weren't for Bob Hope, there wouldn't be stand-up comedy, in a sense. He uh, started out on radio, and he started doing topical monologues. He would, something different from other people on the radio. Other, other radio comedians were more out of the vaudeville uh, world. They were Burns and Allen or Jack Benny. Bob Hope uh, told his writers to come up with jokes out of the news, or what was happening in Hollywood, or happening in Bob Hope's own life. And so uh, his, his monologues were topical week to week, and this was something brand new. And when you think about it, that's what all stand-up comedians really do today. Bob was one of many who went over to entertain the troops during World War II, but he was the one who, who continued to do it afterwards. And he, he really saw, he saw the mission, he saw how important it was and how, what the kind of impact he had with the troops. And he continued after the war, and all through the 50s and 60s and into the next war, Vietnam. Uh, and he, he was a star who realized that he could have a place on the public stage. If you think about the old stars, you know, the old classic Hollywood stars, uh, Clark Gable, Katherine Hepburn, etc. Um, they were big stars, but they didn't really have a role in, the, in public life outside of their role as movie stars. Bob was one of the first to, to have a role outside of, uh, off the movie screen, off the TV screen. He was friends with every president. He was uh, a, a, a force in uh, entertaining the troops. He was a spokesman during the war, during the Vietnam War. He became a somewhat controversial spokesman uh, for the war. But the whole idea that a, that a Hollywood star could have opinions, could have a, a, a point of view, could have a role on the public stage was something that really didn't exist much before Bob Hope. He really was somebody who, who couldn't, couldn't really think of his life without performing. He just loved being on stage, uh, it, he loved the applause, and he was addicted to it. Uh, he couldn't stop. He couldn't conceive of, of a life where he wasn't a public figure uh, of, you know, on the stage entertaining people. So uh, he did continue to, to entertain a, a little longer than he should. His faculties were going. His, eyesight and hearing were going and he probably stayed around too long but the guy he was incredibly hard working he in his 70s and 80s he was still traveling all the time doing you know 100 or 150 personal appearances a year uh, he didn't have to do that he was a big star on uh, you know on TV he didn't need to go out in person but he he did and, and it was it was an addiction but he truly loved it and he was very good at it he was a happy guy he enjoyed what he was doing. He enjoyed being famous. And there are a lot of stars today you can't say that about. They're, they are got anxieties and they're complaining about the paparazzi. And what, Bob Hope never complained. He loved being famous. And there's something very endearing about a guy who just loves what he does. I certainly wouldn't have started the book if I didn't think a lot of Bob Hope. I grew up with him. I loved his early movies. I had ambiguous feelings about him too in the 60s and 70s during the Vietnam years. 
but I was open-minded and I wanted to sort of uh, take the full measure of the man. In the end, I came out, I would say, liking him more than I did going in.